to Happy Nursing Friends. This is Ila. Today we will discuss about Virginia Henderson's nursing need theory. Virginia Henderson was a nurse, theorist and an author. The need theory is about the importance of increasing patients independence so that they can take care of themselves as much as possible while in the hospital and also go back to their normal routine fast after hospitalization ends. It also talks about the basic human needs and how nurses can fulfill them. According to her, nurses should do for others what they would do for themselves in the times of need. Her theory had 14 components which together makes up a holistic nursing approach and covers physiological, psychological, spiritual and social needs. These are the basic needs which a human should maintain to be healthy and survive. First one is breathe normally. A human being should be able to breathe on his own without using any mask, cannula or other external machines without the aid of anything. Next is eat and drink adequately. A man should be able to eat and drink in adequate amount. How much is needed for him? Not more, not less. If he is not able to take food properly, always feeling like not eating or nauseous, then he is not healthy. If he feels the amount every day he used to have is not enough anymore. If he feels hungry always, then there must be something wrong. Eliminate body wastes. Elimination of wastes from our body through stool and urine is very important because they are actually not needed in our body anymore. And if they remain and don't get any way through, then it will be toxic to us. Like if a person cannot pass stool or urine normally, every time needs a suppository or enema, feels nauseous but cannot vomit, then it may be due to any health condition which needs attention. Next is move and maintain desirable postures. Often we see people saying, my arm is so painful to raise, I cannot raise my arm to write on the board, I cannot bend, whenever I bend it feels something like, it's like something is broken, or I cannot seat properly, I cannot stand properly. That means they are having difficulties to move either one part of the body or the whole and they are unable to maintain any posture they want. According to need theory, he is not healthy. Next is sleep and rest. Adequate amount of rest and sleep is very important for our body as well as our brain. If someone is not able to sleep properly, like he may have insomnia or he may not be able to fall asleep just like that, whenever he is going to take rest, he is feeling uneasy and as a result cannot rest then he is not able to maintain his basic need and he is not healthy. Select suitable clothes, dress and undress. This means we should be able to choose clothes for us and dress up as well as undress ourselves on our own without anyone's help. Clothing is also a basic need which we should be able to fulfill on our own to represent health. Yes, sometimes we need help regarding a zip or a lock or a button, that is fine. But if we need somebody's help to fully dress or undress ourselves, then we are definitely not okay. Next is maintain body temperature within normal range by adjusting clothing and modifying environment. Friends, you may have come across situations like it's summer and you are sitting with your friend who is sick. So what happens? You switch on the fan. And his response is like, oh, why are you switching on the fan? I'm feeling cold. Just turn it off. Maybe then he wrapped himself up in a blanket. He is actually feeling cold when he should feel hot because he is not healthy. Keep the body clean and well groomed and protect the integument. Integument means our skin. Friends, you may have noticed when we are sick, we feel lethargic. We don't actually feel like getting up, taking a shower or doing any self-care activity. We don't feel like grooming ourselves. We don't actually care how we look. But when we are fine, we always pay attention to our looks, our grooming, our skin. If it's dry, we put a lotion. So if a person is not keeping his body clean, doing nothing to protect his skin from dryness or extra oiliness, always being shabby without proper grooming, then he is not healthy. Next is avoid dangers in the environment and avoid injuring others. A healthy human being should always understand the importance of safety and security. So after he fulfills his physiological needs, he must take care of his safety needs. These are normal reflexes, like if a car is coming, get out of the way, cross the road cautiously, which are generally maintained by human beings, unless he has some problem with his health. Like one who is mentally unhealthy may take self-destructive steps, 
may not understand the difference between danger and safety and may even attack others causing injury. So one who is able to avoid such dangers mindfully as well as do not inflict any injury upon others will be considered as healthy. Next is communicate with others in expressing emotions, needs, fears or opinions. This is also a psychological aspect. One who is mentally healthy should be able to communicate with others and share his emotions. He should be able to express what are his needs, what are his fears, if he is having any opinion, he should be able to explain the reason behind that. Now that may differ from person to person. Like someone may be introvert or shy. He may have problems sharing with others. But he should at least find someone whom he can tell his feelings about. That will distinguish him from the unhealthy one. If the case is like he cannot speak to anyone, can express his feelings to absolutely no one, then we have to consider him unhealthy. Next is learn, discover or satisfy the curiosity that leads to normal development and health and use the available health facilities. A healthy human being should have a thirst of knowledge. He should have a habit of asking questions and attitude of learning more about a thing. Like if we consider a particular student in a classroom, he is sitting at a corner, never asking questions, doesn't have any interest to learn, always sitting quietly, then we have to understand that he must have some sort of mental or developmental problem. And what else is said in this point? The point says a healthy human being should be able to use the facilities available related to health. For example, as I gave the example of a sick friend before, he was telling you to switch off the fan as he was feeling cold. Now that was the physical aspect. Now consider the same friend feeling cold but is not able to express that or maybe he cannot even realize that. So when you put the fan on, he remains quiet. So technically he is not able to use the facility available at hand, neither is he interested to go to doctor. That is a psychological kind of unhealthiness. Next is worship according to one's faith. This is the spiritual or uh, we can say moral aspect actually. Suppose I have faith in mother nature and not on any idols, but I cannot worship according to that. Because I am always thinking what others will think, whether God will listen to me or not. I am always preoccupied with the thoughts about my good deeds and wrong deeds and somehow I am stopping myself from following my faith. So that is ultimately the characteristic of an unhealthy person. Work in such a way that there is a sense of accomplishment. We have often seen friends around us who seems to be disinterested every time. Even after getting highest marks in exam, they be like not so happy, like it's not a big deal, it's normal, as if it's nothing to them. Well, I am not implying that all of them are unhealthy, but this is just an example. We often see people around us who are working like machines and doesn't have any sense of achievement in them. To be socially sound, we should work in such a way that we have a sense of accomplishment after the completion of our job. We should be able to feel that we have done something. Otherwise, we will never be able to feel the fulfillment of achieving something and that will affect our social life as well as our health. This is very similar to the self-actualization which we studied earlier in nursing education. The last one says play or participate in various forms of recreation. This also we have studied in nursing education that to lead a healthy life we should not only work 24-7, we should have also uh, some time off from our busy schedule to enjoy life, to reminisce our achievements. We can play something or have a hobby like drawing, reading a book, we can participate in any social events or have any recreational time because if we don't do so then we will just be turned into machines and it will make us socially unhealthy. So a nurse should know the 14 principles of need theory, always recognize these signs in patient and attend to them accordingly. So that was all about Virginia Henderson's need theory of nursing. If my video is useful to you then please like and share my video and subscribe my channel. Thank you for watching.